introduce myself. I am Lady Tay. Some people call me Coach Lady Tay. I'm Lady Tay. And um, I am the admin of um, Milo Kirby World. And um, I'm just here to have a good time and, and um, jam with you guys and, and show you what we do in the um, vaccine to get these room boxes together for you. You know, let you kind of get an experience on what we do here, okay? When I say we, it's me and my son. He he make, he helps me um, make the chandeliers and stuff. So it's not just me, but um, I'm the admin. Been collecting dolls my whole life. So uh, <laughs> I'm actually going to show you some of my old my old dolls that I, I've had since the 90s one day. I tell you, I, I've been collecting dolls for a very long time. Um, have you guys been collecting dolls for a long time too? You got any 80s dolls? Okay, this song right here, this Al Green song, this is the song that uh, I refer to a few love scenes with uh, Jazzy and Juicy. It's called Simply Beautiful. So if you read in the storyline, Simply Beautiful, this is the song right here. And this is our guest of the hour. I'm going to introduce them. Some people don't know them already. If you do, you're very familiar with them. This is... The Jenkins. We call them the Swanky Jenkins. <laughs> King and Queen Jenkins right here. This is Jasmine Jenkins. And this is Russell Jenkins Jr. But we named him Juicy because he was a juicy baby. You'll hear his brothers and sisters in some of the future posts tease him about that. So that's where he gets the nickname Juicy from. He was a fat baby. <laughs> so uh, you know how family are. They give you give you nicknames <laughs> that you can't get rid of. But uh, it just stuck with him and he liked it. You know, they called him that in his basketball days. He played basketball in high school and in college. Let me turn down the music a little bit. I feel like I'm yelling. In the storyline, he met he met Jazzy in college at LSU. She's from New Orleans and she went to LSU. You can see here she has the saxophone. She's been playing saxophone since she was six years old. And she got a scholarship to LSU to play in the marching band. So she's been um, playing a long time and very good. Well, while she was at LSU, she met Juicy and he was playing basketball. She um, seen him first and had a crush and she hoped, and hoped that she'd get to meet him one day. And their path crossed. We'll talk more about that in the future in the storyline. But they met in college. And um, they've been in love ever since. This sign here is um, a sign that he had when they went out on a date. He saw this sign and he bought it and he hung it on his dorm. So I, I posted that today. So this is going to go on their memory wall in the living room. So uh, they had this, he had this sign in his dorm. So that's where that sign come from. He loves jazz. Most people will see, will think it's the music, but he's talking about her. <laughs> so uh, we brought him out tonight. He wanted to come and make sure that y'all treat his woman right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's very protective of his lady here, <laughs> Mr. Big Man Juicy right here. Anyway, if you're not familiar with the story, you can go to hashtag 
um, Swanky Jenkins MCW, and you can read more of their storyline. Kind of, kind of get you, um, you know, kind of get you up to date and familiar with their story. And um, we're gonna bring more with their family in. I've been trying to get their house, um, concentrating more on building their house up before I brought in more characters. So that's why you mostly see them. But um, they are the main characters. I do have their family ready to come on the scene. Um, Juicy and Jazzy is going to have a cookout, and that's when their fa when his family is going to come over. So you guys going to get to uh, see his family, his brothers and sisters, and how they, oh, thank you, and how they tease each other. So it's going to be pretty fun. <laughs> Anyways, move them aside. We've been working on their doors. If you didn't um, see the last video, what we did was we found the picture on Pinterest and we got some tracing paper. If you only, you only do this step if you want it frosted. And you know what? If you don't care that it's see-through and you just want it to just be for picture's sake, you could just use a, a copy of a picture and just stick it there if you want but I wanted it to be um, on glass to look realistic I try to make things real detailed as you probably noticed from my work so that's why I did this step so if you like it to look realistic and you want to have the um, bars on raw iron on glass I used a sharpie I traced it with a sharpie to make it on trace paper to make it look like this and the reason why I want it like this because I want it to have uh, like sunlight still shining through so that's why I did it that way and now I already put one in but I might not keep it in because I still want to paint the doors Oh no, we might paint the doors tonight. I was trying to decide if I was going to, um, I know I'm going to have it white on this side, but I'm trying to figure out if I want to have it white on the other side, or I think I'm going to have it brown like a wood. That's what I've mostly been seeing on Pinterest, so it'll probably be wooden on the other side. Um, what I use to make the doors is two cardboard paper two cardboards. Let me see if I have one so that you can see how I carved it out. Give me one moment. I use cardboard for everything. The reason why I use cardboard is because I'm trying to make things out of recyclables. You know, I believe in saving the earth. <laughs> so if if I get an Amazon box, it ain't going to last long in my house because I'm going to make something out of it. <laughs> I don't know if y'all agree with me on that. But this is, a, this is like cardboard. That's basically all I use is cardboard. If it's already thick, I don't have to thicken it. But if it's... A, then I just use two cardboards, which makes it easier because you could just slide the glass in there. But um, this is the basis of one here for some sliding doors that I might do on a future project. And what I do is I cover it up with lots of paper, recycled paper, you know, bills that we don't want anyway. <laughs> But if it was something that I was selling, I, I wouldn't use that. But um, just paper. <laughs> hey, Barbie girl. Bar uh, one Barbie girl. How you doing tonight? <laughs> I just want to ask y'all, is it okay for me to be myself? I'm just as goofy as I want to be. And I can't, I can't be any other way. So I hope you don't mind. 
Is it okay that I be myself? <laughs> Anyways, um, that's that's how I do it. You know, it's cardboard. Everything's cardboard. So, um, y'all hear the music in the background? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you doing? <laughs> Anyway, well, I'm playing old school. Well, is that considered old? Well, R&B. These are 80s babies. Um, I don't know if I ever told y'all their age. She's 34. He's 38. So, they were born in the 80s. So, they love 80s and 70s and 90s music. So, they love the old school stuff. This music you hear in the background is kind of what I think they would have listened to when they were in college. He introduced her, I mean, she introduced him to a lot of genre of music because she's from New Orleans and she grew up around music. Her mom was a singer. I don't know if her mom is a singer. If you read the uh, story with her mom, her mom is a singer. So she grew up around music and she's been playing since she was six. So she grew up around music. She introduced him to a lot of music and a lot of the things that they have in common is music. So she actually encouraged him to play piano. So um, anyway, we'll do more in the storyline in that. Just stay tuned guys. Keep coming and looking at the post. Make sure you're reading the post because I go into detail in the post. Um, Mattel may have made these plastic people, but in my mind, they're real. So I really, you know, go out and, and write a story. And I, I want you guys to have an experience when you read the story as if you're there. So please make sure you're reading the stories, okay? Um, I like this, um, I used this in another scene. Can you see it? It's the wall paneling. This actually, the style wall paneling is already in the dining room. So I'm going to continue this pattern. So I got this up here so I can, um, kind of go by what I'm going to make it look like. Um, I am going to put some paneling here. And I'm going to put a frame around here. I don't want to bore you guys with the detail. But basically, I'm going to use cardboard for that as well. And while I'm doing that, I have to cover it with paper. This is the boring part of the job. But hey, she said she loved my little people. I know. They, I mean, they, they're real to me. They're... They're real to us, you know. I just love uh, writing about them. And, and it's amazing um, how when we write it, it seems like it comes to life. I don't know. Do you feel that way too when you write your stories? That's how it feels to me. Anyways... I'm going to paint these doors too, but probably not tonight. I don't know. We'll see. I really didn't want to get messy with paint tonight. That might be the last. I might just paint it all together. That's what I'll do. I'll do the paneling and I'll do the framing first and then I'll paint. Hey, how you doing? Ari Ken, how's it going? Good to see you. I'm Lady Tay. I'm Lady Tay, the admin of uh, My Little Curvy World. And I was just going over how I made the doors and how I put wrought iron, um, wrought iron on the door, on the um, windows. We did that the last video, so you can catch up on that. Yeah, it is another form of storytelling. It really is. It, it is another form of storytelling. And I tell you, um, it's no different than when someone writes a script for, uh, for TV. 
I mean, it's just those people are real life people that are actors. Well, they just as real as them. I mean, think about it. Those characters are not real. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I love writing the story. It, it's fun to me. And, and, it, and it comes natural, too. I'm glad that I'm doing it. Like I said, I've been I've been um, collecting dolls since I was a little girl, you know? <laughs> right. It's no different than, than TV. No different. Only difference is they making a lot of money at first, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't do it for the money. I do it for fun. So, anyways, I was just showing that you guys that I make my doors out of cardboard. I already did all of that on there. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start... Um, I guess I could do the paneling tonight. It's not that much because it's just this. So I can go ahead and do that. Anybody coming in, we're listening to old school music because in the storyline, these two love to jam to old school music. So I'm playing that to get you guys an experience. You missed the jam when I first came in here. I was dancing, see? That's why y'all need to come early. <laughs> That's why you need to come on in. Follow the channel so you'll know when I come in here. Because <laughs> I don't announce it because I have a family, so I never know when I'm going to be able to get in here. So I, I just come on in. I already cut up some, I already cut up cardboard, so like I said, that's the mundane part of it, but um, I've already did that step, so I made it easy for myself. This is just a regular Amazon panel um, from the box, you know the tabs, right? Like I told y'all last time, there's a difference in the cardboard. There's building cardboard and there's cardboards you can use for making furniture and use for um, panels and stuff like that uh, or doors. But you don't want to build with this kind of cardboard that's thin because if you try to paint it and all that, it's going to buckle in and you don't want that. You want your room boxes to last. I mean, you could do it and double it up, but don't waste don't waste glue on that. So I use thin cardboard for making furniture and for paneling and stuff like that. And I just get some regular glue all. Glue all. Um, I buy it by the gallon. Do y'all get this kind? You builders? Hey, how's it going? Um... Lee, I see you over there. I do got some people on Facebook. This is the kind of glue I use. And I just pour in a jar that I can close up every day. And I just uh, use it to cover it, cover with paper. If you do have to leave anytime, that's fine. I'm, like I said, I was just going to cut my camera on and just work online. You can watch me. If you got to put the kiddos to bed, I do understand. But this is usually my evening. After my son goes to bed, I'm up burning the midnight oil, crafting. Do y'all do that too? How fast does it dry? Um, It kind of dries as fast as... um. It reminds me of school glue. It doesn't dry really, really fast. But um, I tell you, when it dries, it feels like concrete <laughs> to me with paper. I guess you could say the style that I use is sort of like paper mache. I'm using glue and I'm using paper and cardboard. I learned this from Froggy. I have to give her credit. This is how... I saw her do in the beginning. Now, I know she used a lot of foam board, 
but the reason why I don't only use for foam board, even though it's lighter, is because I want to make this where anybody can afford it. I want anybody that can that can't afford to buy a whole lot of supplies. I mean, everybody can afford glue. Everybody can pretty much afford um, cardboard. I mean, you could go to Sam's Club and get cardboard. So I just, I like to make it simple where, you know, parents that don't have a whole lot of money, they can't use that as an excuse to why they don't do any crafting with their children. Yeah, I mean, anybody can afford uh, school glue. I mean, you can even use regular school glue. I did use school glue in the beginning, but I noticed like over the years from the humidity of my stuff being in the garage, it kind of buckles in a little bit like, like I didn't use good glue. And um, I don't know about you, I want my dioramas to last. So that's why I do that. Can y'all see my workspace? Let me move the Jenkins back. Y'all see that little sign I made? It says, together we make a beautiful family. I believe that's true. <laughs> they have some beautiful kids <laughs> that I found. And a lot of people ask me where I get the little girl, Raya. I found her a long time ago. She's actually older than them. Um, she was a Chelsea doll. And um, I think I found, hey, LaTanya. I think I found her like uh, maybe seven or eight years ago at Walmart. Um, it was another doll. They came with pets. I don't know if y'all remember them. They were Chelsea dolls. They came with pets. And she came with a pet hamster or something. So, okay, when do you add glue and then, then what do you do? Okay. This is the base level. I'm, what I'm doing is wall paneling. The wall paneling will look like this. If you looked at the Jenkins dining room, the wall, they have wall paneling like this. What I do is I put a layer of paper down first. It's gonna be that. See that? And then I put some cardboard. Oh, I've dropped a sign. Y'all have to forgive me. I'm a little um little busybody so if i go too fast for you it's okay to ask me questions to get me to slow down so i can explain things to you once i put the first level down then i cut out strips of cardboard and i put it on here to make it look like this does that does that make sense She says she crafting with me. Yes, that's what I want y'all to do. I want y'all to craft with me because you know what? We got to stop making excuses to why we not doing stuff. And I'm, when I say we, I'm talking about me. So since I'm here and since you here, we might as well do this together. The stuff falling apart. But I want to keep my sign up there. <laughs> That's the best I can do for right now. <laughs> I want y'all to craft with me. What you making, girl? You making an uh, entryway too? I know this froggy made an entryway. Perfect for the holidays. I didn't plan it that way. It's just I I just happened to uh, see that she's make she made an entryway too, and I. It's funny because a lot of us crafters have the same mind. That's what you're doing too? Unique, you making an uh, entryway too? It's gonna 
gonna have some um, candles and stuff and everything on, when I'm done. You know how jazzy, you know how jazzy like to jazz things up. So we have to make sure it's all nice and shiny. You see the little lamp over there is, hey, how you doing? <laughs> see how the lamp is all shiny over there. We gotta make everything jazzy up over here. If you're just joining us, uh, what we're doing is we're um, making wall paneling to go on this wall here to um, the entryway. And like I said, I use cardboard and paper. This part is a little boring and I do apologize. That's why I'm making sure I have some music on in the background. That's Al Green playing, if y'all can hear it. Well, thank you. She say my stuff look always looks so great. Thank you. You know what? The secret is in the details. It's definitely in the details. Um, I was just saying the other night that... <laughs> I wish I could make things simple and just make a, a room box with just walls. And anytime I attempt to do that, I guess my OCD or whatever it is just tells me maybe it's God. I don't know. Like, you need to do that better than that. <laughs> you need to do more than that. <laughs> So I wish I could just make it simple, but I can't. I always have to go all out and, and do more details and, and that's what I do. So I do appreciate the fact that you guys enjoy my work. I mean, it's fun to me, you know. Before I started crafting, my best friend, well my, I got several best friends, but my, my um, BFF, she passed away last year, but before she passed away, um, she told me that I need to display my doll because I had all my dolls in a box and she happened to be over my house one day. And she said, why in the world you got all them pretty dolls in that box? You need to have them dolls on display. So I said, you know what, you're right. I do need to have them on display. But then I started thinking, I don't want to just have them on display. I said, I want to make them look like they lively. I want to make them look like they're doing something. So, you know, just like you guys, I'm sure, went on, went on um, YouTube and when I went on YouTube and I started seeing all these different people making furniture for the dolls and and making, uh, y'all should have seen my face, man. I was just like a little kid in the candy store and I saw that. I saw Froggy and I was like, it was Froggy and it was another lady I saw on there just making stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute, these are grown people like me making stuff. And I, I just got so happy. And I told my husband, he was just looking at me. I said, I can do that, baby. I can make that. And he was like, you can make that? I was like, yeah, I can make that. So I just started making stuff. And then next thing you know, I started building and building and building. And after a while, he was like, okay, baby. Uh, where all this stuff going to go? <laughs> you too? <laughs> Next thing you know, I had a little, I really did literally have a curvy world. Because <laughs> uh, at the time we were, we were in a bigger house. We're, we're moving soon, but um, we had to downgrade for a minute since we relocated to the area we at. And uh, in that house, we had more room. So I had, y'all, I had, y'all gonna see it. Y'all already seen the movie theater. I made that a long time ago. Uh, I had a movie theater. I had a school. Y'all gonna see the school soon. I had all kind of stuff. He was like, okay, where well, all this stuff gonna go? <laughs> I was taking up the whole house, y'all. 
See, I didn't know about making it into room boxes. I I was just building. I was just building the way. I was literally in another world. That's why I love my logo as a, a hat that looks like another world because it really is another world. When I go into my imagination, I am not in this world at all. I'm in another world. And that's what I want you guys to feel like when you read my stories. I want you to feel like you're in another world because you really are. Our imagination is another world. And people don't understand that. But when they do finally understand it, they like, wow, you know. But I've been doing this since uh, 2015. I got my first curvy. Um, the blue hair curvy was my very first curvy. She said I was collecting boxes at work. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I was working part time at Sam's Club. And I was just taking boxes. Yes. I would even ask the customers. I'd be like, uh, you going to use that box? <laughs> Especially the display boxes. Aren't the display boxes the best? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Those are the best. Okay, this is the base of the paneling. This is the base right here so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to figure out how much of that's gonna be there and one thing about paneling you can make it as fancy as you want yeah they are the best boxes and you know what else the best boxes those um those you those u-haul boxes are good for building and um Believe it or not, those Walmart large boxes are good. This is what I'm using. Those um, Walmart large um, boxes. Those are good boxes. But you just... One thing about them, though, you want to make sure you don't put too much glue on them because they will buckle in a little bit. But you can hide it, though. But um, I paint, so... When I paint it, you can't see it. Okay, so that's the paneling. And what I use for paneling, this is just a regular Amazon box, y'all. Stop throwing away them boxes if you got them. Make something out of those boxes. Break them down and use them for something later. I mean, you can make closet shelves or something with those boxes. You can do things with those boxes. Okay, that's where the paneling is going to go. Right here. Yep. Yep. Let me see where it stops. It stops right here. Okay, so this is my first paneling right here. Can y'all see what I'm doing? Y'all can see what I'm doing? Okay. For some reason, I got two phones. For some reason, the phone on the Instagram side kind of looked dark. Y'all sure if y'all can see me? Seem like it's more lit. It's more lit over on the... You agree with me? Yeah. It's more lit on the um, Facebook side. Y'all sure y'all can see me? Okay, she said she can see me. Okay. I'm not too happy with that there. The glue and the cardboard and the paper together kind of feels like, um, it kind of feels like uh, you can, it's pliable like clay. I don't know if you ever dealt with paper mache before, but you can kind of form it too. That's what I'm doing. So it looks more neater. If you don't like the ridges in the cardboard, 
it's a trick to that. You can double it up with more paper if you don't want the ridges to show. Sometimes I'm a little lazy and don't do that, but I'm going to do it because I want my work to look good and I want it to last. And I got plenty of paper, so why not? <laughs> Now, not on this part yet, but like on this top part. I'm going to put some more paper there. Don't worry, this is recycled paper. I'm not wasting any trees out there. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, Julie and Fairy of the Wind. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm not wasting any trees. This is recycled paper, y'all. I really am adamant about that. My little curvy world is made by mostly recycled things. The only thing that I may really buy is the maybe like the food and well lately I've been making my own food but um the ceiling is foam board. And I do that because I, I like the ceiling to look clean, no wrinkles. I've done cardboard ceiling and I didn't like it, so. You learn as you go. That's why I'm, I'm like, keep crafting. If you don't like it, just keep going. You can make it again. I made a lot of stuff again. A lot of the stuff that you guys see in my little curvy world, I made again. Very good. Just getting set up for the event. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? I dolled it. We over here making, uh, I know it's, this is kind of mundane task here, but I'm making some, um, some um, wall paneling. And like I said, I'm using cardboard. Recycle cardboard. This is an Amazon. This is an Amazon um, box. <laughs> hey, how's it going? I liked your post today with the scary movie stuff. That's so funny, girl. I never saw Candy Man. I'm scared to see that one. <laughs> I did see Saul though. Saul is funny. People people thought Saul was scary. I was sitting there laughing. I guess I'm a little weird. <laughs> Especially that music. That music. <laughs> she said it's scary. I guess it is scary. The, the music to me was funny. They got me with the music. <laughs> anyway, um... What you're hearing is the music. The background is um is um music that I kind of figured that uh, Juicy and uh, Jazzy listened to when they were dating. They um she liked a lot of Al Green stuff because she listened to her parents listen to this music. You guys are y'all '80s babies too, like me. I know I'm telling my age. I don't care. <laughs> I'm an 80s baby, so I remember as a little girl myself. Chainsaw Massacre made me laugh. See? Ain't the only crazy one. <laughs> Laughing of uh, scary movies. I guess because I knew it wasn't real. She is. Oh, you an 80s baby too? Okay, so you probably remember. I don't know if you probably remember your parents listening to records. I did. I remember my parents listening to uh, Lionel. Lionel Richie and um, Al Green and all the greats. So that kind of gave me an early, that gave me an early appreciation to music. Okay, y'all see how I made that wall panel in there? You just repeat on the other side if you're making a small room like this. Just repeat on the other side. So this one will do. Um, so I remember my parents listening to, hey, how's it going, my friend? Yeah, Motown, yeah, Motown, yes. So I remember them listening to the music. And you know, my favorite memories was when they would listen to the music, they would, you know, laugh and have this 
this fun look on their face like they were remembering some things <laughs> and I just I remember that as a child how happy my parents were when they were listening to the music that kind of music and it gave me a happy thought about the music so that's why I've always liked that kind of music too and I was in band I talked about that last time I was in a, in a live that I played clarinet and I played tenor sax. So I'm a sax girl like Jazzy. Each one of my dolls have some kind of facet of my life in them. I'm married just like she is for a long time. And I play saxophone. I actually got a saxophone over there that I need to dust off <laughs> and start playing again. One day, one day I get inspired to um, get some lessons and start playing again. If you don't use your talents, you lose them. You know that, right? That's why I talk about that in my post. If you don't use the talent, you will lose it. And that's what, that's what happened to me. I got rusty. I got rusty. She said, Dawson. Yeah. You sing, well, you're an instrument then. Singing is, makes you an instrument. We all instruments. You're just using your voice. That's awesome. I can't sing that well, but I try. I don't care, I still sing if I don't. <laughs> I get that from my grandma. My grandma couldn't sing, but she sure would bust out a gospel song in a second, boy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all instruments. You just use your voice. Um, but yeah, I played saxophone and I played clarinet. Well, I played clarinet was my first instrument. Saxophone I learned later. Um, and I actually got a tenor sax, but I need to get back into it. Um, that's a talent I really wish I didn't let go. But you know how we get married and and get our lives and and work and which you know we have to do that but you know I tell you I'm getting my talents back <laughs> I'm glad that I'm doing this because this helps me be creative my actually my son actually helped me get you play clarinet too for a hot minute <laughs> Oh, you played flute in high school. Oh, you were tooting the flute. <laughs> One of my good friends is a um, flutist. She's actually a professional now. She's a band director. And she actually became a professional flutist or flautist or however you say it. Your son plays saxophone? Girl, you encourage him now. He might be another key, Kenny G or something. You never know what come from that. Encourage him, girl. Encourage him. And I tell you, we got to use them talents so we lose them. That's why I came back to crafting because I left crafting for a while. Um, My channel, if you've been following me a long time, it was kind of dormant because I wasn't doing anything. Um, But, you know, I kind of got convicted. It was like, you know what? I need to go back and start crafting again. I loved it. And, you know, I don't want to lose my talent. So that's why I came back. And I was thinking about the Jenkins, but I never really broke down this storyline until I started um, crafting again. And I'm glad I did. Because you get inspired. So, you know, I don't want to lose that gift. Okay, so these are my wall panelings. For both sides. I'm going to add details to them. Like I said, this just came from an Amazon box. Y'all see it? She said, for a hot minute. <laughs> You're so funny. What do you mean when you say hot minute? <laughs> Y'all hear hot, uh, pretty woman in the background? I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that was a Motown song. I learned something new. Did you say anything else to me? 
<laughs> okay, so now we're going to add details. the beginning y'all we're getting something off this to-do list All right. in my spare time I just sit here and just cut up a lot of cardboard that's what I did here this is my home depot of doll world <laughs> this the plywood <laughs> basically <laughs> Anybody still with me? If you got to go and come back, I understand. I'm just going to be sitting here making stuff because I got to get this done. Just come back. <laughs> Just using this as a guide. It's a little taller. That's okay. That's I want it to be tall anyway. This is a wall I use in other <laughs> crafting. I use, I'm using it as a guide. Just playing some old school, y'all. I have much respect for the old school music. And 90s. I like 80s and 90s music, too. This new stuff, not so much. <laughs> I mean, I give uh, I give all music a chance, but if I don't understand it, I just mm, some music I just don't understand. I can relate to what these people are saying in, in this Motown stuff. I like positive stuff. See how I'm doing this? I'm cutting cardboard for the details for the wall panel. Y'all see that? That's what I'm doing. Still with me? She said a lot of music. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the part I don't like. The, a lot of bad words in it. And you know, some of the melody kind of get on my nerves too. The, the repetitive, <laughs> the repetitive stuff of it. Because they mostly sample things. And then they just rap to it and stuff. It doesn't seem original. My husband, he's a musician, but um he writes um he writes orchestral type music for churches and stuff. And um he used synthesizers and and a lot of um keyboards and stuff like that me personally i love horns i love original instruments like what jazzy got i love those um i guess that's why i was inspired to make that um that bar winds and horns because i i love um i love horns you know, from my, my music background. 
my son helps me with the lighting and um he's actually one of the reasons why i started crafting too because you know i was watching him make stuff one day and you know it kind of put a um creative creative um spark in me to start doing things too and of course my friend telling me i need to display my dogs What are y'all making? Are y'all making anything right now? Yeah, see, that's why we need to listen to the children. That's why we got to listen to them. They help us get our creativity back. I'm glad I did. You know, I used to be self-conscious about my dogs and had them put up in a box. And I should have never felt that way. But you know how you how people judge you and everything. And I guess back then I was concerned about that. Now I don't care. Oh, you renovating a Barbie house. Now I can't wait to see that girl. I cannot wait to see that. So what are you doing to it? Are you um, gutting the whole thing out or adding details, wallpaper? I can't wait to see it. Your stuff looks so good. I like how you use a lot of colors. You would think I would use a lot of colors with Jazzy because, you know, in New Orleans, they got a lot of color everywhere. I'm not going to use a lot of colors with her house, but when I eventually work on her mom's house, her mom's going to have a lot of colors. Oh, adding details and what I'm telling y'all man that's the that's the that's the um key right there the details it I know it can be tedious but it really does make a difference when you add detail it kind of remind me of um if you played video games you remember when we used to play those um old platform 2 2d platforms like Mario Brothers and then when you look at the video games now how graphic they look it makes a difference you give your room a total 3d effect when you add details i um i like it when someone can look at my room without the dolls in it and they really think it's a room they really think it's a real room I went to a doctor's office one time and showed a um, nurse some pictures that I did one time. And I didn't have any dolls in the picture and she thought it was my house. I said, I wish. <laughs> we give them, we give these dolls <laughs> better stuff than we ever have. <laughs> I told her, I said, I wish that was my house. <laughs> <laughs> you know what with the with the wall with the wall paneling you don't have to put the paper down on it right away what you can do is you can go ahead and just glue hot glue on there i got distracted I'm talking hot glue the um panels down first <laughs> i got distracted talking yeah but isn't it true though, Miss Nita's doll show? They be living better than us. <laughs> I, I just told one of my friends, I said, I said, I'm just gonna make the Jenkins house be my vision board. This is what I this is what I would love to live in one day. <laughs> like my Instagram trying to time out. Does it time out after a while, y'all? If it does, I'll come back. <laughs> yeah, you laughing at what I said? 